Okay, we're back with Jillian to show us the chassis demo uh, from Gardnox. Awesome. Well, welcome to our chassis. So what we have here is a zonal gateway. You can actually see here. Um, it's running actually on an FPGA. So um, this is actually a development board. Uh, we have our subzonal gateway and we have an HPC, a high performance uh, computer here as well, which has all of our products integrated inside. Uh, and we'll walk through a few use cases. This is an actual headlight, headlight button. So you can actually see we haven't done anything with it quite yet. Um, and we have some cameras and everything that we're gonna go ahead and walk through. So I'm gonna walk you through a few different use cases here. So here's my, my touch screen, which I'm gonna control things with. And this is actually our analysis tool, but don't worry, we'll get to that soon. All right, so we're gonna first talk about our COM engine. It essentially provides multi-protocol routing across sensors, devices, ECUs, zonal gateways, HPCs, et cetera. What you see over here on the left is actually a real-time car network diagram. Uh, you're actually able to see the flow of data and communication um, coming. So we have our, our camera here. We're not gonna focus on our camera on, that use case, uh, on this specific use case, but we have two wheel sensors in each of these wheels, um, which is actually GPIO. So it's being converted here to, um, sent to my zonal gateway where we are then um, in our comm engine also converting it to um, ethernet and sending it to my HPC. What I want you to take a look at over here on the bottom right is our, both our throughput and our latency. Now this is um, a huge, huge part of our USPs of our comm engine. So you know, our scale is up to 10 gigabits for throughput uh, gigabit, gigabits per second. Um, the industry is talking about a lot, lot more here, um, but we're not even getting one gigabyte per second here. So um, we're very happy with these numbers and our latency as well. Um, but what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm actually gonna simulate a skid, which means my two um, front wheels are gonna go at different, um, different speeds. Um, so you can actually hear that, you can see that, it's vi visualized here. But what I want you to focus on here is what happens to my throughput and my latency. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the car from skidding, and I'm gonna go ahead and initiate that one more time. And you don't really see a change. Yeah. Now, yes, there is a change going on, but the whole point here is it's so low, it's so small. When we're talking about safety critical systems, when we're talking about needing to route, route um, all this different data and information, we're still at a very low, you know, um, latency and throughput here and a guaranteed bandwidth. All right, so now we're gonna really look at that latency. So as we look at that, a lot of our questions are, well, what happens when you have a very high data load? So what you're actually seeing is, um, I'm now gonna be working with our cameras. There's a front camera here, which you can actually see on the right here. And then you actually have our side camera here. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I am gonna go ahead and turn on that side camera, which you now see, you can see us here. <laughs> this, this screen is very unforgiving, so don't get self-conscious. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this um, on and off, and I want you to take a look at my throughput and my latency here. I've added a lot more data, right? And it's not done much to my throughput and my latency. So as we're looking in a car, as we're adding more autonomous driving features, we're gonna continue to need, have these needs. And as we continue to add this, this is the technology which enables that transition. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot of headroom. I mean, everybody is talking about 10 gigabits per second, yeah. but 10 gigabit Ethernet isn't gonna come out for another probably three to five years. So I think up until then, it's great to be able to keep throughput you know, as minimum as possible and get as much data coming through there. Exactly, so even if we're saying 10 gigabytes, uh, gigabits per second, mm -hmm. I'm only at 0.57 right now. Right. So it doesn't matter if I add you know, five or, I'm still well, well below that threshold. Right, perfect. All right, so the last use case that we're gonna show here is our SOA, um, so our software development. And so we're gonna look at our SOA framework and our developer tool suite to actually enable high beam assist. So I already have this hardware functionality here, and I'm going to deploy and build new software to actually enable um, new functionality. So what you see here is you can actually see my brights are on, here my brights are on, you can see it here, you can see it on the monitor as well. 
and I'm simulating a car approaching. I'm blinding the drivers, essentially, what you're, you know, right? So this is pretty annoying. So we're going to use a relatively simple use case to show how I'm going to model a new application. All right. So this is a smaller version of a more contained version of my SOA um, developer, de model-driven uh, development tool. Um, and this is actually my analysis tool right here as well. So what we're gonna see is you can actually see we have two different devices here currently, and you'll see after we build the application and deploy it that those devices have changed. So I'm gonna bring my new light sensor device over here. I'm gonna create a new port to my headlight controller, and I'm gonna connect my light sensor device to my head, ooh, to my headlight controller. And I've very simplified, right, made this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and generate code. So what this does is automatic code generation. So when I say shortening time to market, here you go. This is shortening time to market, right? So I'm going from months to years for new functionality to weeks. So, so the code that's generated, how ready for certification is it? Because definitely, you know, with, with with vehicles and so forth, there's a certain you know level of of code uh, certification, so that there's no dead code. There's uh -huh. no, especially with criti mission critical parts of the software. So uh, um, I assume it's pretty. Pretty yeah, so because go. of it, so we, yeah. we have um, automatic certification because okay. when you have this sort of model-driven development, that it gets automatic, that recertification. Oh, that's great. And okay. so we, our roots are actually in cybersecurity as well. Um, so we come from defense aviation. There you go, the name. That yes, I was wondering about regarding so, um, yeah. so that's actually why, um, you know, we, be, we believe in security by design. Security cannot be patched in. So this whole system is secure by design. Um, this is actually based on a field proven standard that's already deployed in aerospace and defense, um, as well as, um, you know, satellite radios and everything like that. So um, you've, you've, we've got that covered. We're gonna go ahead and do an over the air update. Okay directly to my chassis. Obviously, my car has stopped because we're doing an OTA. Yeah. It will not stop on the road in real life, but <laughs> it's a nice visualization. And you'll see over here that these two devices are about to be replaced with my new ambient light uh, devices. And there you go. Now you have ambient headlights here. And here we go. We're driving again. So what I want to take a look at is I'm going to go show new cars again and we are no longer blinding our drivers yeah you can see it flashing yeah so you comes. can see it not only here but you can also see it here that's great wow, that's that's very uh, quick coding <laughs> <laughs> it's faster than I could do <laughs> so this is a we actually have over here um, your uh, blank canvas developer station so you can really build it from scratch so what we did here for CES to kind of explain that but with our customers for instance we sit down and really can walk through what that looks like perfect and now we're just gonna roll back the software and you can actually see once again in a moment it will be replaced again um, from um, the, these devices to go from ambient headlights um, off. Great. Just one second. <laughs> so with this, with these OTA kind of updates in uh, as they go into production, or if this was a an on the f on the road vehicle, mm -hmm. uh, could you use basically any type of Oh, you know, whether it's cellular or, or Wi-Fi if they're at the house or, or whatever. Yeah, so, I mean, OTA was not invented yesterday, right? right. Uh, we work with a number of different OTA vendors, which have a number of different methods. It's so whatever's available there, you we can use. We work with all of it. We're not here um, to tell our customers what they have to do. Our customers can tell to us, come to us and say, we actually work with this, this vendor, and we'll adapt to that as well, even if we don't already work with them. Although we already are working with the top Most vendors. Of them. Yeah. Perfect. Um, all right. And so our rollback is complete. Um, you can see we no longer have that going, and we would blind our drivers again. And we can go ahead and finish that scenario. Great. Thank you.